Hello again, good afternoon, afternoon, evening, I don't, I don't really know. Welcome back to Virtually Expo. I am Sarah Jane Deville and this is Steamboat Gav. And we are here this afternoon with a new game from Ravensburger. If you've been following with us this weekend, earlier on today, we had uh, been running amok with the witches in Hocus Pocus, Disney's Hocus Pocus the game. And last night we had a really fun time with lead designer Chris, <laughs> lead designer Chris Leader <laughs> of the Back to the Future Dice You Time game. So we had great time. You can catch up on the... Yeah, if you go to Twitch, you'll find both of those under the video section, I think. Uh, and so Back to the Future wasn't on YouTube. I think that slipped into some time paradox there and disappeared into the ether. But Hocus Pocus is on YouTube where you can catch up if you uh, click on the... Recent past, uploads. Yeah, past, no, it's past live events. I oh, think past live events, okay. Uh, so you can catch up with our things. But hold on just a minute. Don't catch up yet. Catch up with right now because <laughs> we've got... We've got the latest Expandalo. Not expandable, as I told you this morning. I got overexcited. It's the latest Expandalo of the <laughs> Disney Villainous series. And I won't lie, my heart is hammering because I love this game so much um, and I want you to love it too. So if I get overexcited, I'm trying to hold it down. This is one of my favourite family games. I have been warned. Keep it down. Um, so Disney Villainous. <laughs> it uh, debuted in um, summer of 2018. We've been playing it since round about then, I think. And the first one to come out was The Worst Takes It All. First, The Worst. So if you take a look over my shoulder here, here it is. It is the base game, what's considered the base game. There were six villains, if you remember. Yep, so six villains that come with that base game. But the unique point about these games and why you're saying expand alone, yes. that's a brilliant portmanteau, isn't it? Expand alone is that each expansion is also a standalone game. Yes, you so can if you buy, that. if you if you just want to have a little taster of it, you can buy one of the yes. two expand alones. And now the third one uh, that have got three villains rather than six. And that can get you started for, to play a two or three player game. Yeah, but to give a little bit of history, it started with the base game of six six villains. Uh, the aim in Villainous is to be uh, a, a Disney villain as opposed to the normal princess games that you see out there. That's and it, you get to be the bad guy the in these, bad don't guy. you? It's brilliant. It's not, it's not and a... hatch your evil... Plans? Do you hatch a plan? You do hatch plans. Good. Okay, I'm pretty yeah. sure they're hatching, hatching everywhere. Okay. So out of all these, who would you say your favourite villain is? We've got the Queen of Hearts, Jafar, Ursula, Captain Hook, Prince John and Maleficent. Uh, I'm quite fond of Captain Hook, I think, Captain from the first Hook. one. Just because he's extremely theatrical, isn't he? A bit he over is. the top. I love Captain Hook. And Crocodile. also my kids love Peter Pan. Peter Pan. And it's so huge. it's quite nice. Capturing Peter Pan, <laughs> <laughs> just to annoy them. Just to ruin the fairy tale. Uh, and then the second one came out, Wicked to the Court. She's just over Gav's shoulder. I think we can, yeah, we can see it there. Mm. We've got the Evil Queen. She's foreshadowed on the box. We've got uh, Dr. Facilier. A lot of people, uh, Dr. Facilier, he's from Princess and the Frog. He's one of my favourites. You know, yeah, he's a sort of villains. voodoo magician. Yeah, he? I really enjoy him. And Hades. When we played this at the UK Games Expo last year, there were a lot of people queuing up to play Hades. And then finally, just before this one, we've had Yzma, I always say her name wrong, from Emperor's New Groove, Scar. So what, what's this one called? This, this, called this is Evil Comes Prepared. Evil Comes Prepared, that's right. Yeah. Evil Comes Prepared. We've got Yzma from Emperor's New, the Groove. Emperor's New Groove. Yes, sir. Yeah. Scar on the box there um, from uh, The Lion King, of course. And Ratigan. I know you like Ratigan a lot. Yeah, from The Great Mouse Detective. It's a and bit of a... Lesser known Disney film, but I think it's really good. It's actually the first Disney film I saw um, in Disney World in 1986. So I came home knowing all about him. And, but sadly, um, he gives us a nightmare. So that put an end to that. Well, it's not him, it's the bat, isn't it? The bat, the There's an evil bat. bat in there. Yeah. That is, that is in the game fidget, as well. I think yeah. Fidget, yeah. Yeah. So, like, and so this one, so that puts a, with this new expand alone, as Gavin said, um, you can play it by itself. Um, I'll show you in a moment. I'm it really adds the roster. Going to disappear for one second. Of villains, up to 15 Two. different villains. That's a lot of badness going on. A lot of evil to get up to. So 15 villains. 
Uh, we're going to take a look at the new expander loan now and you can see who's so that's in. the whole roster that's all together whole, yeah. with this new one yeah. so i wouldn't i think the base game says you can play two to six two to six in the base game villains um so i wouldn't try for all 15 it might be a i bit think it much. should be a thing i think we should get together and well we did once play nine we didn't did. we with <laughs> the family yeah that was that was that was noisy quite a noisy and chaotic noisy. marathon but it was fun it was fun <laughs> six to six probably we tried six. Yeah, yeah maybe maybe so should we take a look at the box let's take a look at so here it is disney villainess it's lovely velvety red so it's perfectly wretched perfectly wretched the thing i love about disney villainous boxes is that they're like royalty they're like the royalty of board games aren't <laughs> they like these get pride of place they are beautiful. They they even feel lovely, don't they? They feel like luxury. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, it's lovely. So, <laughs> so you've got Disney Villainous with like a gold, I'm not sure you can see it. They are twinkly, look. Gold twinkly foil. And then the perfectly wretched is like embossed onto the box with the Disney Villainous. You can see it. Can you see it flashing? I think you can. And then a clue to the most... Highly, as they anticipated, villain is on the yeah, front. Yeah, I think there was a lot of people because Ravensburger have been, uh, they, they sort of had uh, polls, didn't yeah. they? Online polls for which villain do you want to yeah, see? Yeah, it's like gauge interest. And I think there are a few ones that had a lot more interest than others. I think Scar was one of them. Yes. Yeah, uh, which, which came along and Evil Comes Prepared. And I think this certain lady, I mean, I don't know who that is. Who is on no the idea. box? No idea. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Corella DeVille. She's on the box. There she is. Ta -da! She looks lovely. And I wonder who she's joined with. Now, I was really pleased with who she's joined with. Should we flip it over and have a look? Let's have a look. Okay, so the back is which villain are you? And you can see the two new ones. There, so we've got Cruella in the middle. She looks she's very classy there. She's holding it down. Uh, and we've got on this side mother gothel if you don't know who mother gothel is she's what i like to call a modern day villain isn't she oh, i try a little zoom Ooh, try a zoom oh look at that i have the technology oh, wow that's amazing there she is on that she's like a modern day really nasty piece of work and essentially she whips rapunzel away um from her parents she's not a nice she's a manipulator she's not a good one she's yeah bad. she's I was waiting for her to come out, though. She's a bit different. She's not sort of power hungry as, as no. the other. She just wants to live forever and be beautiful yeah. forever. I mean, she's who proper can blame sneaky. her? She's like proper <laughs> nasty, devious. I mean, at least, at least Cruella's just, you know, obvious. She's yeah. going around with those puppies. That's true. So, yeah. And then from deep within the Disney vault, we've got Pete. A lot of people saying, why Pete? So, yeah. I mean, for those of you who were wondering, I mean, that, I'm just going to back here a minute that that is pete's hat that i'm wearing thanks to my sister and ears you see <laughs> thanks thanks becky doesn't he look good <laughs> <laughs> so that okay. is steamboat King. From that. so it's from deep within the disney vault um a lot of people have said you know when we've spoken about it why pete and i thought well pete is logical to me because this is this is disney villainous and disney is mickey mouse and of all the people that Mickey Mouse has ever met, Pete is his nemesis, long-time prankster, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, it's from the very first Mickey Mouse cartoon. Is yeah, it the first Disney yeah. cartoon as yeah, well? It was a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Steamboat Willie. Back in 1928. And I think it was the first synchronised sound cartoon. when we saw Pete with Mickey. And uh, right to this day, I mean, our kids know who Pete is, don't they? They've watched uh, Mickey and the Roads to Races, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Pete yeah, so he does. He does pop up as the villain, a slightly yeah. a slightly more mischievous. Yeah, he's sort a bit of a prankster, isn't he? Prankster now? type villain in some of the chil more sort of children's yeah. TV series. Uh, but I, I mean, I would say he wasn't that. In the, in Steamboat Willie, he wasn't that bad. It was Mickey. <laughs> no, yeah, Mickey was a lot worse. Yeah. Mickey was a bit of a runaway adolescent. Troublemaker. Yeah, it's not if the Mickey we know these that, days. You can, you can watch. I think it's on Disney Plus Disney, and, yeah, and things like it. that. You can watch that. So it's it's interesting. It might give you a bit of background for for playing Pete the Cat in this yeah. game. <laughs> you might have a bit more sympathy for Pete after you've seen seen that short. <laughs> <laughs> so as we said, it's uh, Disney Villas is all about being the bad guy, unleashing your wicked side, or in this case, your perfectly wretched side. And you can play this game by itself 
or with any of the other villains. You can pick your favourite villain and bring them to the party, which is handy when you want to play um, from different editions. So in here, it says, which villain are you? Game for two to three players, age 10 and up, 40 to 60 minutes. Ours always goes long, I would say. There's a lot of thinking involved. Yeah, it depends how quick you are. Yeah, yeah, it depends how sneaky you are. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it says here, just to be clear, take on the role of a Disney villain striving to achieve your devious objective. Discover unique abilities while dealing twists of fate to your opponents. So it's 10 and up. I mean, our children, our eight-year-old plays it with us. So I think if your children are used to playing games yeah. or, or you're willing to have a few house rules to help them out, perhaps yeah. have them play their cards yeah. up and sort of, you know, yeah. not use that to your advantage but just to help them but, but the thing i like about disney villainous is that you can you can because the cards well because the game is tailored to you as a villain you helping and reading for someone else doesn't interfere with your your game does yeah it? exactly so i think it's a it's a great fun game. our kids love it they are they're very excited to see the new the new villains come out so shall we take a look in the box let's have a look okay here we go <laughs> excited here it goes taking off the oh look at that Whew. Like a boxer. <laughs> Move it over. Right. So, so the first thing we come to are the instructions. Now, if you oh, know yeah. me, you know I'm not a huge fan of reading loads of instructions, but I've got to say, Ravensburger have hit their stride here because these instructions are just nothing short of amazing. They explain everything. The setup. Really high praise. I know this is high praise for me. <laughs> I hate instructions. Uh, I read these easily. It explains everything really clearly. Everything you could want to know, and also at the back, as well as explaining who else was in the other expander lanes and base pack. There is a reference section and frequently asked questions. Yeah, I think that's pretty genius. So uh, well done. I really like those. Or also you can watch it if you want to there you are so that's Absolutely. yes well done for the instructions that's i like it. it a lot Go online isn't it and yeah it is have a look okay what have we got next up oh, next we've got an action symbols which is a reversible with villain objective so i'll show you one here this is the action symbols which we'll come to that's just a reference card where we'll go over the actions yeah. and have a little look that's at that. handy we keep this on the table when we're playing don't we yeah and then on the back ah oh. so that's a helpful reminder of each villain's objective so we've not really talked about that too much yet which is that each villain has got their own objective so this isn't this isn't a game where you're all just competing to get points or you know as a as a sort of uh yeah some other way of winning where it's all exactly the same for each player it's, yeah a lot of mechanisms aren't asymmetrical it? it's each villain has got their own stuff that they want to get done. their own way of winning so. yeah uh, and that's can be complicated when trying to keep your eye on who's getting ahead because they're not all doing the same thing as you and you have to remember that this person is not necessarily trying to win the same way as you so i think it's very handy to have around the table <laughs> so everyone gets one of those and also if you were at the uh, uk games expo playing with us last year you'll know if you're waiting in line to play villainous we'd ask you which character you wanted to be and then we would hand you a villain guide so here they are villain guides they're like little mini strategy guides, would you say? Yeah, so they talk you through what's unique or different yeah. about that particular villain, don't they? How how you win, what your objective is, how you win the game, and they give you a few hints and tips and, and details about yeah. the cards that that villain is going to use yeah. to win. How should we become like, you know, connected to your villain? <laughs> you Internalise your villain. Okay, I'm getting to the good bits now, the exciting bits. Right, the next parts in here are the player boards. So here we are, I'm just gonna take a look. The player boards are... It's upside down. Is it? Oh, it is, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I was trying, I thought, oh, I'll show them this. So the player boards, I'll pop one under here. These are just as lovely. Sorry, I just, uh, Rue, is it Rouge 6? Rouge 6, maybe. Yeah, nice hat. Just complimented me on my hat. Not sure if that's a serious <laughs> compliment or not. It is. It is. It's very becoming. I can certainly very becoming. put you in contact with the uh, <laughs> the creator the creator of, <laughs> of the hat. She's available for commission. That's very nice. 
So our, uh, our player boards are just as luxurious as the board. They feel lovely, they're very silky, and they flip open. If you can see, you get your villain's objective, which is tied to the film. It's not some made up, plucked out of the air. This is what I like to call... Yeah, it's based on sort of the plot of the film there yeah. is, isn't it? And uh, what they're actually trying to do yeah. in the film. What we love, the, I think, the most about... I was saying earlier, what I love the most about villains is that it's not token Disney, it's like hardcore Disney. And I tried to explain to Gav early that... If villainous was a stick of seaside rock, <laughs> it would say hardcore Disney all the way through. There's no like, <laughs> there's no, it's not a token stamp on the box. This plays to every villain's film and oh, it's just brilliant. So brilliant. So, so on the front. I mean, yep. what's nice about it though is that Ooh. from from the film, the, 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 the objective of the villain, you you now get a chance to actually yeah. see that through. To do it, yeah. Most of the films, I mean, it's not good, is it? You know, the villain no. gets thwarted. Every turn. <laughs> no. So now you maybe do get to just, uh, you know, yeah. Mother Gothel to, so kind of the to curse keep Rapunzel of forever. <laughs> you know, you should know if Disney says, hey, villain, want to come and join us? You're like, mm, it's not going to end well for me. No. So this is Mother Gothel and her objective there. Just like in the film, hers is to earn Rapunzel's trust. Yeah. Because that's what she wants to do. And there's a lovely quote on the front from her, which we all know from the film. And uh, as you show inside, so inside the uh, the boards are, just like in the, in the uh, film itself, will be your villain's realm. So this is a fairy tale realm. And you have the part beginning with the objective. And then each villain has four parts. Thank you. Four parts to their realm so they can play out just like in the film so those are the player boards which we'll come to in a minute yeah yeah we'll have a look at those in a bit more detail okay and then next we have up the movers so the movers are your player pieces so i will hold on and this is no. mother gothel again oh no that's not a good choice the magic of the green the magic green doesn't screen. quite work okay here is me i mean cruella <laughs> and there she is what i love i keep saying what i love because i just love it all is uh <laughs> the disney movers capture the, the essence i like to say villain essence okay. so these are the sort of your that villain's representation on, yeah. on your game board they're, yeah. they're your playing piece yes and they they're not a direct representation you don't just have a little model of cruella no. de it's trying to sum up the essence yes and, and of that villain of of that villain so she, there she's got the uh the black and white colour scheme and yeah. so forth, hasn't she? And they are hard to put down. You could you could just, oh, they're just great to hold, aren't they? Put, put, put that one down. <laughs> put put that down. one down. Now, Disney Villainous is a card game, as you've probably guessed. So inside the box is each villain's set of cards. Do you want to hold those? So every villain has a set of cards. You go for mother, we'll go for mother I've got them all out. Yeah, should we take a look at that? So I'll just pop those back in there. So each each villain has got two separate decks of cards, mm -hmm. yeah. And these are completely unique to that villain. So there's no sort of shared cards or shared sort of deck no. in this game. Uh, and so the first deck uh, is the villain deck. Mm -hmm. Do you just want to yeah. have, have a grab of that one? For a minute? I've got it. It's the villain deck. So it's the coloured deck usually in your well, not usually always. So it's that. So it's got the the colour on the back. You can see that. And uh, on the back as well, you've got this fantastically detailed... Everyone has a separate illustration. Sort of though. abstract illustration, <laughs> isn't it? Again, summing yeah. up parts of that villain's personality or moments from the film or all yeah. these sort of thematic touches. And we'll take we'll take a good look at those when we come to the each character. Okay. So in, in those decks, you have different types of cards, don't you? So yeah. you've got... So, so this this deck is really all about helping the villain achieve yeah, yeah. their evil goals. That's right. And so you've got cards that are called allies. So I'll this might be your henchmen, the other bad guys. Yeah. Or kind of Mother Gothel's a bit different because... She's got no friends. She hasn't really got any friends <laughs> that we know of, has she? And so these, her allies, tend to be just people who happen to have uh, the something, same sort of like goals. Something to or gain, isn't it? Something to gain, yeah. Mm. They're going to help her out in some way or... Or their goals just happen to align. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. So, poor Mother Gothel. Poor, well, it serves a right, to be fair. Yeah, you know, you true. reap what you sow. <laughs> God. Okay, and then we've got items. So items, so items are, are, are objects from the film. 
magical items or, or, or things of that nature that, that the villain is going to use to help advance their goals as well. Yes, sneaky. Uh, I've got items, and I, oh, effects. Tell the effects, the effects are sort of one-off. It might be a magical effect, might be a moment from the film. It's something something that happens and then is, is finished with Yeah. and helps you out in some way. That sounds cool to me. And also conditions. So conditions that add a little bit of, of interactivity to the game because they're things that you can do on other people's turn. So you're, yeah. you're, you're listening and watching out for yeah. a particular condition to happen and then you get some sort of bonus or benefit. Yeah, uh, on so your own board. Yeah. On your own, yeah, for your own. Always villain. in your own. Those are the main main cards in in the villain deck. So the other deck that they've got is called the Fate deck. This helps you to be perfectly wretched. I like. <laughs> okay, right. So we've got, of course, the opposite of ally, opposite of bad guy. Yeah. yeah. So the Fate deck is things that are not so good for your villain, such as the hero. Or heroes of the the film that the villain's mm -hmm. from. Yeah, we also have effects. Again, these are negative effects. Oh, poor, poor mother gothel there. Uh, and I'm seeing if we've got anything else in here. Oh, and items. Again, these are the items that the heroes are using, or that are gonna have some negative effect on you. So the fate deck. Not, not good for you. Not good. Not good. Not good for you. Good for everyone else, but not good for you. Brilliant. Super. Right. Also inside the box, underneath are lots of lovely tokens. So the first ones we meet are these, and these are called. Those are your power tokens, right? Yep. There they are. One. Ooh. Those are. So those are kind of the currency of the game, really. The how much power. Your, your villain has, and you're going to use that to pay for the cards you want to play mm -hmm. that are going to help you out. Nice. You can also use them as other things. Yeah, sometimes um, some villains have special... So Mother Gothel, for example, needs to use them as sort of trust, doesn't she, yeah. to, uh, to, to count up, up the amount of trust she's got from Rapunzel at any given time. Yeah, I mean, the, that's the different thing about... I think we should point out the different thing about the expand expandalones is that the characters are different to the base game and that they've tried to introduce, like, special setups, haven't they, for more villains. So you have, like, extra tokens in and extra ways of using things. And we've got lots of those in there, which we'll come to when yeah, we show you the different characters. So it's switching it up a bit more, isn't it? Yeah, they do They do keep on innovating. And yeah, yeah, yeah. New me mechanisms. It gets more and exciting. Different different types of cards or tiles or yeah. tokens. And I think that's what we look forward to the most when we know that there's a new expander loan coming out, not just the fact that it's a new character that we don't know how they're going to win and what's going to happen and which one we're going to be successful with. So that is what's in the box. So, so shall we take a look at some of the basic gameplay? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, do you want to, you can pretend, we'll have a look at Mother Gothel's board, shall we? Let's go for Mother Gothel. To Mother begin with. Gothel, okay. So there's Mother Gothel and her board with her objective. Now, the important thing about playing this game is that you don't start on your objective. You always start in the first part of your realm. So this is, this is the realm, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. the... Uh, locations the, from there. It has four of the locations associated with that film. Mm -hmm. And each turn, you're going to move your mover to a new location, and then you get to do any or all of the actions there in any order you want. Yeah. Uh, so if we zoom in a little bit there to see those a little bit better. I'm going to bring that up there a bit, so you can have a look. Okay. So if I was Mother Gothel and I moved, you can move anywhere. It's important to point out. You don't have to go up and down the board. Yeah. You can go anywhere, but you must move. Yeah, you have to you have to change location because some of them are really useful mm -hmm. at a particular time. You can't yeah. just sit there gaining more and more power, for example. <laughs> You've got to keep on the move. When I'm playing keep Prince the John, plot moving. Haven't you? <laughs> I'd like to do that to play Prince John. Just sit there and rake my taxes in. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if I was, so for example, Mother. Uh, Goffel, and I would move to the Snuggly Duckling. Yeah, so we've got the uh, uh, gain power, so so that's that gains more currency for mm -hmm. you uh, from the for use in the game, and uh, we've got the sort of player card, um, 
play a card action there, which is the second one. That's 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 the sort of main one. That's mm -hmm. the, the main action you, you you do to actually achieve stuff. And yeah. so what you're going to be doing is playing cards, uh, your items or your allies to the from bottom your deck. from your villain deck to the bottom of your board here. So you can you can generally you can play an ally or item to uh, any location, and you you pay any. Oh, that's a condition. That's that's not. <laughs> That's against the rules. <laughs> so Let's you you, you pay the cost in power, mm -hmm. and you can you can put them down, and you, you build can, up your yeah you build up your below roster the below mm -hmm. below the board, mm -hmm. um, and they can also sort of stack up like this, yeah, and help each other out. So you, so allies have got a, a cost and a strength as well, which we'll come I, to later. I, do you want me to point to that? I'm here. So if I was playing a royal rider, it was going to cost me. Two power at the top and a little power token, but my royal rider has a strength of three, and that's what I'd be adding up below my realm. Okay. And so, what other actions have we got? So those are the main ones of mm -hmm. gaining power, playing cards. You've also got uh, discarding cards, which can be quite, quite handy. Uh, handy if you're looking at the something. bottom because you're. Often the cards you have in your hand might not be useful at this moment, so you can get rid of them and try and try and find mm -hmm. that one you're really looking for. Yeah. Uh, so should we look at the fate? Yeah. Okay. There you go. So I mean, the interesting thing about this is, so we're building up cards at the bottom of yes. of the board here of our realms, in, but in anticipation, isn't it? The main interactivity in the game. So I mean, at the minute it feels a bit solitaire, doesn't it? Yeah, you're each you're doing your own thing it. and just get on with your own stuff, you know, Seems and some people like that, but. There is some interactivity here because mm. you can try and foil yeah. the plots, the That's plans, and the That's what makes the, the game schemes. worthwhile. That's what makes it all worthwhile Super for me. Super competitive. <laughs> you can foil the schemes of other players, of other villains, by using the fate action. So that's the little uh, thundercloud here, isn't it? <sighs> Down in the bottom there. Yeah, and that cool. lets you pick the top two cards from that villain's fate deck and choose it's which one you want Ooh, to use. Pascal's invisible there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pascal's too Although green. Although he is a chameleon, screen. so he could just change. I'm not tall enough for that. Yeah. Super. Okay, so if I was playing Fate, I would pick up two cards, and then I get to decide which one will cause the most damage to um, my... Rival. Rival, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Your rival As many villain. words are going through my head then. So the, the fake cards, are interestingly, are paid to the top of your board mm -hmm. and the location. And they actually are going to cover up uh, the actions that, that would, available would be available at that location. So they, they kind of work in two ways. Firstly, mm -hmm. just by covering up those actions and making that location... Not as less, fun to go to, is it? Yeah, less desirable, isn't it? And then, But they also often have a special effect on them uh, that does something negative as yeah. well. I mean, it puts a spanner in your So Flynn work. Rider's just coming along and, and causing uh, Mother Gothel to lose two trust. Um, Which is a fifth of my because objective. Because he's chatting up Mother Gothel. He's chatting up Rapunzel, isn't I'm he? I'm not surprised. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that face. Who wouldn't? So just when you think you're doing really well, along comes another rival villain and causes something from your film to happen yeah. that, that's going to set back your plans. And joyously so. It's a great moment when you see your rival... <laughs> Go under. So that's you mean me, don't you? I mean you. <laughs> yeah, I help the kids. So that's the basic flow of things, and it's the first villain to reach their objective, isn't it? And the thing that I always find yeah, funny it's about a sort this of game, race, isn't it? Yeah, but the thing I always find funny about this game is when we get to the end, we're always so sure that each of us is about to win, <laughs> and then one of us will go, "That's it, I've done it." The other one is like, "No." Yeah, it always feels quite balanced to me because yeah. it's always one or two turns in it. Yeah. Like, I was just about to get... You can just see the about smugness coming and you're just ready and then yeah. it doesn't happen. <laughs> oh, it's a real humble pie game sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> oh, I would. So. <laughs> so, shall we take a look at the villains that we've got now? Yeah, let's take a bit of a closer okay. look at each Right, so you can villain. see... If you aren't new to the game, you can see who you're getting in this box. And if you are new to the game, hopefully it will give you a bit of more of an understanding of the villains. So, we think we're going to start with Pete. Are we going to start with Pete? Let's start with Pete the cat. Okay. 
I'm Pete the Cat. <laughs> that, was, that was an impression, that was from right? A, that was from a Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, I think. I don't think he was like that in Mickey Mouse and the Rose to Races. I could be wrong. So I'm, if I'm Pete, I'm going to get out all of Pete's bits ready. Pete's playing pieces, I should say. Pete's playing pieces. Leave Pete's bits alone. I'm going to leave Pete's bits firmly alone. So we'll pretend I've read the little objective guide and we'll have a look. But it does, here it is inside. It tells you about his goals. Um, Pete is a bit special. We'll come to that in a moment. And uh, so that's the villain guide. So you get everything to read there and it's really quite clear. But this is what you get if you're playing Pete. Yeah. So is there anything you'd like to? Yeah, there is. So if we look at look at Pete's board. OK. Gonna open start it. with. And if you have a quick look at Pete's <gasps> cards as well, you notice that he's entirely in uh, black and white. I was going to say sepia then, but it's not. It's black it's and white, isn't it? It is black so and white. So we <gasps> better be in black and white <gasps> ourselves. Look at that. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> look, even, look black was... and white Mickey is in black and white now. I'm not even sure what that tune was. Not sure at all. <laughs> it's the... lovely though. That was the Mickey tune. Was it? Uh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good at impressions. Well. So, uh, should we look at Pete's mover first? Okay. Okay, right. This is Pete's mover that you get. Here he comes. So, as we said, it's the essence of Pete we're after. He is not see-through on his <laughs> top. That is my green screen. You can see his... He's gone invisible there. Let me, let me try. You hold it up closer. Up close, yeah. So, his matching hat to Gav, his little captain's hat. He's the captain of the side wheeler that he hires Mickey Mouse to crew. You can see his little Pete the cat ears. It's a bit hard to see the black, isn't it? But he's got the, the little... Um, he's he's dung, it's sort of like dungarees, isn't it? Overalls yeah. that look, that look in danger back. of falling down at any moment, I yeah. must say. He just needs to hold tight. He's only got one <laughs> one button clasping those. So he needs to hold tight. Oh, tight. But it's, it's lovely. Again, really nice to hold and very, very beautiful. This is Pete's realm. We should say on the front, we forgot to mention, on the front of each realm is a quote. So Pete kindly says, I can't even do his accent. I'm going to knock you right into next week. That doesn't sound, that sounds like... Pete? <laughs> is that Pete? Did he just appear I'm in sure the room? Disney will be calling any minute to hire me. <laughs> I'm, I'm just waiting now, just waiting. So here's locations in his realm, a frontier town, service station, the airport and Podunk Landing, all from Steamboat Willie in 1928. There he is. So, so he would start there. So Pete's kind of interesting in that there's a different mechanism here for his goals and that he doesn't have uh, a fixed goal like most of the rest of the villains. He's got these five different goals and at the beginning you choose four at random mm -hmm. and then you get to choose where on your uh, realm that you put them. So mm -hmm. you, you put one in each location and they're actually put upside down as well. So the other players don't actually know yeah. exactly what your goals are. So if I was against you, I'd know what they all were, but not which four had been which picked actual out. Which four or where they using. were? Yeah. And so Pete, so part part of the um, the setup for Pete at the beginning is choosing where to put the different goals. Mm -hmm. So it does actually matter because some goals are a bit easier to achieve in in certain places. Um, for example, let's have a look. You know, power play, spend at least six power in one term while Peter's at this location. I mm -hmm. mean, so it's really so good to play that at Podunk Landing because that's got two player card actions. And so you're more likely to be able to play cards which cost a lot and get yep. that, that power goal sorted. And as, and as soon as you've done a, one of Pete's yep. goals, it's in the bank. That's what you're I love sorted. about this one, yeah. You've done it. You, you put it to one side. That's achieved, and nobody can't be taken away. Nobody can take that away from you. <laughs> unlike unlike many of the other villains, which I think is is so sometimes know, a bit frustrating, is it? When yeah. you when you when you get a bit further in your goal, and someone comes and fates you and, and like, knocks oh. you back a bit. Yeah. But Pete, I think, is quite nice, and that you can. Yeah. You know, for for us people that like to tick things off a list yeah. and <laughs> have it. Because it's genuinely gutting when you get close to an objective and then someone just whips it out front of you. That's, so Pete is for those that like, yeah, yeah, to that list list tickers. Absolutely. So let's have a little look at some of Pete's cards, shall we? Okay. So. So I know when you were talking about spending down at Podunk Landing. Which one do you want to? Are you looking at the? Uh, 
well, let's have a look here at some of the heroes. So we've got Goofy here. He's really cool. So, um, uh, so when Goofy's played against Pete, for example, the other, the player that's playing him mm -hmm. can switch the locations of some of these goals. So which is annoying. once you and there are, there are other cards in here which help you reveal what the location, mm -hmm. what the uh, goals actually are, mm -hmm. and then you can mo help sort of move them round with. With help of Goofy, I was almost yeah. going to do Goofy then, but I decided well against that. Uh, we got lovely Donald Duck. Away? He likes to get in on the action. I'm, I'm going to hold, see if I can hold it under there. It's Donald Duck. <laughs> now it says Pete must defeat. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was completely oblivious. You're phone by that. <laughs> you just thought Donald was in the room. Hello, Donald. Hello. So, Pete must defeat Donald. He's not in black and white. He can't be on there. Get Sorry. off, Donald. Before <laughs> defeating other heroes. So, if I was going to go about... But I don't think we mentioned that yet. How would you go about defeating Yeah, so once these hero? heroes are on your board, they're not necessarily just there forever, blocking up those no, action spaces. I know if I was playing against you, I'd play certainly play Mickey Mouse. And I'll show you why. Because they're just... He's the boss. You're just, you're just stuck. Boss. You just stuck until Mickey is gone. Yeah. So this is where the vanquish action comes in. So if I just put that up there, so you've got this uh, this vanquish action here. And so the reason you want your allies at the bottom of the board and in the same location as heroes is that your allies can gang up and with a vanquish action they can defeat the hero. So if if your your strength of your allies, which again is at the it's at the bottom here, um equals that of the hero and you do the vanquish action mm -hmm. then that hero gets chucked into the fate discard pile uh but as you can see some of them are pretty tough i mean yeah, a parrot right. and a horse can't defeat mickey i mean if you're fond of these sort of you know yep. animal versus animal fights who would win an elephant or a raccoon you know we can now answer these questions in terms of you know, would a, bandit. a bandit, a parrot, and a horse can defeat Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Who'd have thought that? Eh? <laughs> Disgraceful. So that's why I, I love that. I think when you play a villain like that that completely throws a complete spanner and a stop in the works, then uh, that really disrupts your play, and I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. So, so that is Pete. Let's uh, Pete. have a look at the next character, shall okay. we? Okay. Next coming up, we've got... Should we take a look at Mother Gothel? As we said Let's earlier, Mother Gothel, she's from the 2010 film Tangled. If you haven't seen it, you really should. And uh, I think Tangled's probably got the best animal sidekicks ever. I can't remember laughing so hard at a film as Tangled. If you haven't seen Tangled ever, if you've seen the film Tangled, but you haven't seen Tangled ever after, you really need to because so it's... So that's a sort of uh, short... It's like a Disney short. A short it? animated film, wasn't it, that was a... What do you call Max it? A special... Uh, bonus feature, I think. That's really funny. Isn't it is it? hilarious. It's, it's starring Maximus the horse and Pascal the <laughs> chameleon, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. It is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I don't think I've laughed so hard. The tears are rolling down my face. So here is Mother Gothel, and we can take a look at her board. And she says, just like in the movie, you can do it. Tom, know <laughs> you love doing that. You want me to be the bad guy? Fine. Now I'm the bad guy. <laughs> that's worse I, than my Pete. That wasn't good. good. It was Sorry. a good effort. It was, it was a good effort. I'm <laughs> but uh, she's she's the the proper nasty one. It was it was good. I'd say it's on par with my Pete. I'd say. Uh, she needs to start to win. She needs to start her turn with at least ten trust. And her mover is. It's probably easier to show you here. Why am I so bad at this? I've got no spatial awareness <laughs> whatsoever. So it's the sundrop flower from uh, the film, what the whole film is based on, where Rapunzel's hair gets its power and what poor Mother Gothel had been using to stay young. Flower gleam and glow, let your power shine. That was but, Oh my God, is Rapunzel in the room? Rapunzel's in the is room. Is she in the room? Singing her song. I'm not sure. I think I just heard her sneaking <laughs> in. Oh my golly, Flynn will be here shortly. So it is the sundrop flower and the cape. I really like this. The flower is really detailed and it's beautiful. So let's have a look at some of the Locations. interesting. Well, let's have a look at the interesting okay. thing about Mother Gothel first. Is that is Her that she setup. has a special hero, which is, is of course Rapunzel. Now Rapunzel is actually uh, a tile rather than a card, so you don't get it mixed up with the fake cards. Mm -hmm. But she is a hero, and 
she basically never leaves uh, Mother, Mother Gothel's realm, does she? No, she sticks so around. So at the end of every turn, Rapunzel is going to carry on her journey through the locations to escape one location at a time to get to Corona, just like mm -hmm. in the film. Yeah. And when she gets there, Mother Gothel's going to lose some of that trust. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a bit weird, isn't it? It's a bit like Rapunzel's stuck in the film again and again trying like to get there. Like Groundhog Day for Rapunzel. And so a lot, a lot of Mother Gothel's cards are about trying to pull Rapunzel back, or get her back into mm -hmm. the tower, and prevent her from moving, that sort of thing. Yeah, she's there. But, yeah, she can't be vanquished. You cannot get rid of oh, her. I've just got to so by the time you have get... a look over here a minute. Okay, Sorry. so you can defeat Rapunzel, but you can't vanquish her. She, if you de When you defeat her, she returns back to Rapunzel's tower, and it all starts over again. So we'll take a look at some of the car. <laughs> so that what is that? <laughs> Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. <laughs> oh, Rapunzel, you've given me some gifts as well. Come down, come down from your tower. And bring that frying pan. Are you gonna climb up? Ah! <laughs> Rapunzel, I Rapunzel. think she just fell. Sorry, Rapunzel. I think she just fell. I don't know what it, She's you, left me some lovely gifts. I don't know so. why you didn't go up the tower. I should have just gone up the tower, shouldn't I? I could have got some peace and quiet. So, <laughs> so that's Rap Rapunzel is Mother Gothel's special setup. And when Rapunzel's finished... Fiddling Rapunzel, sorry. Fiddling with her locks, we'll take a look at some of the cards. So, let's have a look. I'll hand them over to you because I know you're... Sneaking in. <laughs> what? What? Sorry, I just had to go. And oh, sort you out missed Rapunzel. You missed Rapunzel. Issue. Oh right, she was here. You didn't. You didn't go up. Okay. No, she left me some flowers. Uh, yeah. So as we as we sort of alluded to before, Mother Gothel doesn't have too many friends, and so she has to sort of rely on some of these other allies, which are really they're after Flynn Rider, aren't they? Yes. To to, uh, <laughs> to begin with, uh, like the royal guards and. They're quite useful because they, mm. they highlight another one of these actions, which is uh, to move an item or ally. Mm -hmm. So once you've played an ally to your, to your realm and to a particular location, they're not necessarily stuck there. They can move if you, if you go and use that symbol. And so the Royal Guards, for example, are really interesting because they can move a hero with them. So if Punzel's there, mm -hmm. you use the move. You move the royal guard and they drag Rapunzel back to the tower for you. So there's these nice little touches and combos in the game that are really, really thematic. Yeah, they really work with the story. Um, really. So, yes, yeah, so if, if the um, royal guard, for example, was in the Snuggly Duckling. <laughs> <laughs> Snuggly Duckling? Isn't that what happened? That, that's, I don't remember that in the film, but um, you, you, we need to. That's... Not in the Snuggly Duckling. Okay. No, it's sounds... just, hen just uh, hench thugs in there. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. Lovely crowd, though. Lovely crowd. <laughs> Can't beat them in the Snuggly Duckling. So, as well as Rapunzel, though, there's a few interesting heroes, aren't there? Yes, in, Do you want to show some of those? Some of our favourite ones. So, we've got... I'm going to show him up here on my wonky hand. Here he comes. Oh, here he comes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm even bothering. Let me Pascal. Try that. And Pascal. There he is. And if I was Mother Gothel, I'll tell you what, I would have... So, naughty old Pascal. Pascal. And I'll tell you what, if I was Mother Gothel, I'd have been a... Uh, oh! With the frying uh, pan, he's a troublemaking chameleon. So, he is one of them. He can't get rid of Pascal, he that could, is, he? He couldn't. He couldn't. Uh, okay. With the frying pan. So, the frying pan is also one of the cards. Comes up. <laughs> oh! Rip Pascal. That's what the kids will say. Rip Pascal. He's fine. Uh, he's we've fine. got Maximus from there as well. And I'm just looking for him because I can feel the smolder. I just can't find it. Here he is. Flynn Rider. Look at that nose. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pick him up. No, he's not having it. There he is. Yeah, so Flynn Rider. The sort of Who helps Rapunzel. Reluctant hero in the film, isn't he? As well as Rapunzel. He is. he is. We've had some fun with Flynn Rider, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's very good. So shall we move on now, okay. if we can work our way through these ducks okay. to one of Cru your favourites. She's, she's my favourite. So we'll bring out Cruella. 
those Cruella's is cool. So as I'm sure you've already seen me flashing her around, she has her essence of Cruella is the cut, the coat, the beautiful coat, and her hair, her super hair. And she says, I'll get even, just wait, you'll be sorry. And her objective is to start the term with at least 99 captured puppies. She does not want 101 puppies because... Well, there's 100... Isn't it 101? It is 101. Oh, no, I, I can, it's 101, 101 huskies, isn't it? No. Can you imagine? Huskies. 101. No. As, as lovely as that would be. It's not huskies. Uh. It's small, calm Dalmatians. Okay. The reason she can't have 101 is because uh, I beat her to it. Ta-da. I think I was done it. I'm are not you, sure if that's cow or not. Are you sure that actually Dalmatian did look a bit like cow? <laughs> Slightly cow. Who, know, who knows? She, I don't think she has like a Frisian. <laughs> she a Frisian might have. Coat, she? she might have. I'm. I'm just looking. Someone has run away with Cruella's. Cruella's deck. <clears throat> is it you? Yes, it's there. It is me. you. Okay. Sorry. Right. So Cruella Deville. She's starting a turn. Her special setup. So before we go, we got a bit of a oh. question in the chat. So uh, could a five-year-old who's used to games play play this game with assistance? And are there any sets that are easier? Uh, so I think I think if there are a five five year old that's used to games mm -hmm. and playing with parents, yeah, um, I think they can play it. Uh, they, they'll depending on their their reading comprehension yeah. sort of level as well. But definitely our our kids have all played it. Yeah, and we've played at the um, expo with younger children, and their parents have just because each yeah. person's cards are played to their own board it doesn't impact as yeah. much on a normal game i mean so we got a six-year-old at the yeah. moment and he he certainly likes joining in with mm -hmm. somebody and playing doesn't yeah. he um he so, got so i think if you've got a bit of a precocious five-year-old who's really into their games yeah especially if they know the disney story already yeah. it makes more sense doesn't it that's yeah that's one of the real benefits of it being mm. so thematic that you kind of already know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, yeah. a little bit, don't you? Yeah, if like, you know the film. Like you say, if you're if you're Captain Hook, you know that your job is to defeat Peter Pan. You yeah. know what happens? Jolly Roger. Yeah. So it's a yeah, it's a game for everyone. I think it's easy to so still I don't know fun. who's the easiest one to play, do you think, out of all no, the sets? Not usually who you think of. In the beginning we thought we thought like some of them will be much easier to play than others. I I think Ooh. I'm going to say Maleficent, probably. You need to get a curse at every location. Um, yeah. Yeah, so probably Maleficent from so, the base game. Yeah, so it depends. If, yeah. yeah, if you want the base game, that's quite a good one. Yeah. Because you've got six villains to... Yeah. Uh, I mean, the easiest to understand in the base game, I'd probably say, is Prince John is the easiest to understand. You're collecting those power tokens, yeah. but it is hard going, he's isn't just, it? He's just got to get lots of power. Lots of power, but it's hard going to actually achieve that <laughs> but it's easy to understand so if you were just in it yeah. for the for the play it would just yeah but i think if you find your favorite villain you just keep going don't you plug on <laughs> yeah any more so, have we got any more questions? i think that's it for now okay a tangled is one of my top as well yeah <laughs> okay so where do i get to cruella so her special setup is that she is capturing uh puppies and they come in the form of these little cards so the little cards in multiples here we've got 11s and 22s not not multiples 11 11 and 22 do us 11 cards and 22 cards and they each have a little part little location on that tells you where when it comes out of the puppy supply they're all turned over to start with when it comes out of the puppy supply it goes onto the board in that part of the realm she's got radcliffe house where um the puppies come from with um, Roger and Anita and Pongo and Perdita. The countryside where they all get, uh, when they escape with all the sooty coverings. That's right, yeah. The milk farm where the cows look after them. And Hell Hall. Hell Hall, that sounds pretty bad. The Deville Manor is the proper name. Deville oh, is it? Manor. Okay. Deville Manor. Apparently, the Deville Manor, that's what I'm calling it. Deville Manor. So in Cruella's deck, she only has two friends, so she's slightly upon Mother Gothel. And she's quite strange, isn't she? She's only got two allies. Yeah. So they are definitely her her allies and henchmen, aren't mm -hmm. they? The, she's paying for them. What are they called? A Jasper. Has isn't it? Jasper. Jasper and Joris. Jasper. Jasper and Joris. Oh, why do we think Jasper? Yeah, ja it is Jasper. I'm calling the right. It's Jasper and Joris. <laughs> Jasper and Joris. Jasper and Joris. <laughs> Jasper and Joris. And these are spe they are the only two. You're right. So once they're. Uh, they're gone. They need to be recalled, but we've got some cards to do that. So once they're vanquished... So they've got a different... They have a special symbol. They've got a different symbol on them we haven't really talked yeah. about yet, which is the activate, isn't it? 
Yes. So, oh, I can't really see. Oh, I'll I'm out sorry. I'll second. take Casper and Joris away. So if you look on here, you'll see the activate symbol here. Um, so cards with the activate symbol mm -hmm. on are ones that sort of stay on your board at the bottom as mm -hmm. allies or items. And then when you move your mover to a location with that with symbol, the symbol. Which say there we are, yeah. you, you get to do what it says on there. You, yeah. Sometimes you've got to pay a bit of power. Mm -hmm. There's some cost to doing it. Yeah. They, they give you these these specialist actions yeah. you can do again and again whilst they're still there. So if I had Horace in my realm, I can activate and it says either capture a puppy token at this location, if you've got them out there, or choose one from the supply. So what I would do, if I'd land and activate, I'd pay. I would don't need to pay. That one's free. Um, and I would turn over. It says Radcliffe House. So I will place it there. And then when say next turn I could move to here and use another well I use the other activation to capture a puppy token at a location if that so, makes so sense. So they're really crucial to just like yeah. in the films mm -hmm. uh Cruella de Vil is mostly just sort of going around being menacing isn't yes. she? Jasper and Horace are the ones that actually do the doing real the work. Doing the work. So, doing you, the work, so yes. you have to you have to make sure that they're out and you can play them yeah and also you can retrieve them mm -hmm. when they and if the, yeah, if you're probably to also, um, you can retrieve them using these two, but there are other tools that are helpful as well, like uh, the Roadster. If you remember her lovely big drag car from the, from the movie? That tran that uh, transports different puppy tokens around, and uh, she's also got some other items like Flashlight. So in the Hero deck, we've got Pongo, who's the dad, and it says puppy tokens cannot be captured at this location. So you can if you banked a lot of puppy tokens in one place, you're going to need to break that roadster out and move down if Pongo's in your way and you can't vanquish him. We've also got Anita and Roger. We've got Perdita. And all of the other ones like Captain the Horse. So there's a lot of fun, a lot of fun cards. I think Cruella's my favourite to play. And I know it's recommended if you're just starting out in villain, Villainous that Cruella is okay, the so maybe, most maybe suitable. Maybe Cruella's one of the easier ones. Oh, I would say so. I mean, I have one playing it. <laughs> but no re really though i think it is it's simple you're you're moving tokens in you've got a limited number of allies so we got a, a question in the comment in the uh, chat on twitch say no hints on what's coming next for disney villainous so the ravensburger in the chat are desperately trying to not give any hints there <laughs> that's that way <laughs> oogie boogie oh, okay oh. Very nice. That's a good choice. That would be oh, orange, because he's normally green, isn't he? What's I can't the film? Oh, I like to see Nightmare. The orange one. Nightmare before Christmas. Before Christmas, that's right. That's the what's this? What's this? I, we love I that know. film. I know. No, I just can't remember film. the name. <laughs> Our Oogie Boogie would be an awesome one. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, there's no there's no hints that we know of, or I haven't found anything because sometimes there's a bit of a sneaky. Crack. A sneaky hint yes. in the game, isn't there? Well, I haven't found there anything, is. but of course we have got Marvel villainous. If you if you're into Marvel, mm -hmm. coming up, uh, we're going to have a look at that tomorrow at eleven o'clock. Right, but before we go, I I feel the need to challenge you. Okay, well, what sort of challenge are you thinking of? I'm thinking of a, a looks challenge. Oh yeah, I'm ready. So, in the film, in the film Tangled. Tangled yeah rapunzel mother gothel there's also mm -hmm. flynn rider flynn rider the sort of charming the thief, smolder. isn't he and he kind of yeah he, he's very charming and he he's thinks sort of introduced to him because you you see the wanted posters don't you yeah of, uh, with his wonky nose yeah well they can't get his nose, <laughs> nose right, right. see the wanted posters that's the thing he's oh my life what is that <laughs> who is that handsome devil <laughs> Is that, that a is. smolder I see? <laughs> that's definitely that. That is the best smolder I've seen in a long time. That's not a smolder. That's a smolder. Okay, so let's try. So he he's got a a, a secret move he uses yeah. to get what he wants, hasn't he? Called the smolder. The smolder. Before we go any further, hold that smolder because someone has just ha, said. Have you got an example of this? Of I the... could find the smolder, but I just someone's asked the question. Rattinger will be a great character, and that is true. You're in luck because. In Evil Comes Prepared, we've got oh. Rattigan. Let me just uh, get you there a minute. He's already there, so and he is it's great. It's hard to see there, but he's, yeah, he's in Evil you Comes love. Prepared. Uh, he's got his cape there. He's sort of 
flourishing his cape. Uh, yeah, so he, he's a really good one. Uh, in Evil Comes Prepared, he's, he's got a tile where he can flip that flips in certain yeah. circumstances and you see the kind of... The rat. The rat, isn't it? The kind of bestial version of Raticum where he kind of goes savage at the end of yeah. the film. Uh, so that's a really good one. If you're into The Great Mouse Detective... That's great. Um, is that the right one? Yeah, that's it. That's Evil Comes Prepared. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And also, before we go to the small draft, because I'm flexing my smaller muscles already, Gaston exists. Gaston. No one like Gaston. That would be a great one. I think we should Gast have Gaston. Gaston doesn't exist yet, does doesn't, he, mate? Doesn't know. Should. Although you might have to just <laughs> get down and do press ups every so often. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Oh, that would be great. That, yeah. that, I never even thought of that. That's amazing. Yeah. Gaston for the good, win. Good yes. choice. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. So, did we see the smolder? The smolder. Here's the example. Okay. I'm going to hop. <laughs> I'm going to try with us. Why don't you just hold Oh, jeez. <laughs> Give up. Wait, wait. I don't want. <laughs> Okay, there he is. Look at that. Eyebrows, eye. Okay. Wait, there's no teeth. Why don't I, mean, I don't really have to change my expression. Okay. Oh, you to, don't, don't you? To, right. to get okay, well, I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, then, ready. so three, two, one. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> there's something, that man's got a talent. I can't control my face. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> see you I, past there so i'm just i'm just i'm just praying okay, you're better no, than I'm, i am i'm just gonna i'm just gonna put this there <laughs> i'm still trying <laughs> that is so bad oh i need oh I'm that sorry. Is so bad i'm sorry about that this is the <coughs> reason there's a there's a reason he was hired right i think on that note we're, we're going to leave it there yeah um we'll be around so, for a few minutes won't we? if you want to, uh to see our previous streams, you can on on Twitch and on check out Twitch, uh, Ravensburger Global and yeah. uh, Ravensburger UK on YouTube. Yeah. And also on the Ravensburger Global Twitch channel, if you look on videos, there's some uh, playthroughs from some of the games we're talking about this mm -hmm. weekend that happened yeah. um, from our G lovely North American yeah, over colleagues. G Gen Con. They were doing that as part of Gen Con. So if you actually want to see the kind of, sort of playthroughs of the games, yeah. uh, you can check there. Yeah. So we've just been waffling on a bit silly. around too much. <laughs> Again. Uh, and so also uh, don't forget if you're here as part of Virtually Expo to do, do the badge thing. Yeah, badge. and don't forget to enter the competition on Twitter. Yeah, so... It's in the chat, I think. In the, in the chat, Ravensburger UK, you can win a copy of the game. I'm just waving goodbye to Pickle Lee. <laughs> See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. So coming up tomorrow, 11 o'clock, we yeah. have... We've got Marvel Villainous. That's, that's directly Infinite above power. me where my hat is. Infinite power. Yeah, that's really good. And then at three o'clock, uh, we've got a kind of roundup of some of our favourite Ravensburger games that we, that we haven't been that aren't yeah. new, yeah. that we have been that haven't been featured so far. Yeah. So I think we're going to have a look at Jaws, uh, have a look at Horrified, yeah, Minecraft. Uh, our boys love Minecraft. Minecraft, and uh, yeah. So if you've got any requests, yeah, give us. Uh, let us know. We've got them. Let us know on that stream, and we'll. We'll grab them out and have a little look at the pieces and components and give you a Answer. bit of a taste of what it's Any all about. Any questions that we can? Yep, that's been great. So uh, don't forget, tomorrow it's 11 for Marvel Villainous, 3 for the games, and you can catch up over on the Ravensburger Twitch, Twitter and YouTube channels. Have a good Saturday night, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.